Hi guys. Okay, so this is a follow-up to uh, a video I made uh, recently uh, demonstrating a Sharp X68000 core running on a Mr. FPGA. Um, this is a walkthrough, uh, a step-by-step -step guide of how to create yourself uh, a boot2.vhd file so that you can automatically boot the, um, the Mr. X68000 core into the SX window um, user interface uh, without needing to mess around with floppy disks or substitute SAS disk files or disk images or whatever else. So the first thing you're going to need to do is install the XM6 emulator. Uh, I'm assuming that we're doing all of this on Windows. This is um, Windows 10. Uh, it may well work on other flavors of Windows, but um, I can't guarantee any of that. So for the purposes of Windows 10 with XM6 running on top. XM6, uh, you can obtain fairly easily if you pull up your search engine of choice and just do a search for XM6, X68000. Okay, there you go. First hit, hopefully. And download and extract XM6 Pro 68K. It's a zip file, so you need to extract it and then install it. And that's basically it for that one. The other thing you're going to need is a boot disk that, um, or a human 68K boot disk that contains the bin directory, um, bin folder, with uh, all the command line utilities. Well, I can't say all, but certainly a, a selection of them that we're going to need. So where do we get that? If you do a search for Mr. X68000, Okay, and you should find the link to the Mr. X68000 GitHub page. In there, in releases, you'll see that there's this um, blank disk x68000.d88 image. Now, that's not actually a blank disk, it's a system disk, and it does contain the, uh, the bin directory or bin folder that we're going to need. So the other thing you're going to need is the system disks that include the SX window user interface. So again, um, what the search engine of choice and look for Internet Archive X68000. Okay, you can see here Sharp X68000 collection. If you come down to show all on the files and go into Sharp X68000 zip view contents. Now in there, I'm not gonna locate them for you, but you should be able to find all of the uh, system disks that you're going to need. So once you've got that lot, then you're pretty much ready to go. So start up your emulator, having already installed it. The first thing you need to do is create a disk image. Now, here's what I prepared earlier, but I'll show you how to do that. In fact, we'll delete that, start again. So, tools, make a sassy fixed disk, select a location for it, call it whatever you want. We'll be renaming it afterwards before we copy it over to the, uh, the mister anyway. Save that. Specify capacity, maximum is 40, so that's what I'm going to go for. Okay, um, by default it'll do the formatting, so I, it'll format that drive for you, uh, drive image. So that's the best option, ready to format it. Okay, and that's created it. So then back into the tools menu, options, select SASE, it'll probably put it in automatically as your first and only drive. In the unlikely event that it hasn't and it's still blank, increase the number of drives or set the number of drives to one and then go and select that new HD HDF image or whatever you've called it and that's it. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to need to do is copy some utilities onto that drive. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to insert or open a disk image Okay, so 
of our X68000 system and as we discussed previously we've got this copy of blank disk x68000.d88 that's what you're going to need first off you're then going to power the machine on okay that's it so once we've got to that point if we have a look at the directory um, you see here we've got a bin folder that's what we need so it should already be in the path, but um, but we'll do it manually just to be sure. So you need to go to C, which should be your new hyphen HD disk image. You're then going to manually make DIR bin. Let me have a look. See, we've got an empty bin folder. We're then going to go to drive A, and we're going to CD into bin. Okay, there's all the utilities we're interested in. So whether there's a path to bin or not makes no difference because we're actually in there. So what we're going to do is copy all star dot star to C colon, and this is where you need the soft keyboard. So in the tools menu, software keyboard, you need the backslash and then bin. Okay, that's done. That soft keyboard out of the way. So if we then go into drive C, DIR, CD into bin, and you can see we've got all those utilities there. That's it. Then what we can do is we can replace that disk with disk one of the uh, the SX window disk set, so the DIM files. But then going to reset the machine and you can see that disk one of five is actually the uh, Essex window uh, 3.1 boot disk which will come up with the user interface so again the hard drive because we didn't boot from it because we booted from the floppy will still be drive C so what we now need to do is go into our command line on drive A have a quick look there okay and we can see the contents of, of that disk we basically need to copy all of that over to um, the C drive so we know we've got our bin directory on our C drive so I'm going to run C on backslash bin backslash copy all star dot star to C colon Okay, and then we go to drive C, get a directory up, and you can see we've got everything on there, including though our bin directory that we copied over previously. So now what we're going to do is exit from the command line back to the GUI. We're going to Eject the floppy disk. You can do it through the emulator menu and through the GUI either way. Okay. Don't worry about that. We're going to restart the machine anyway, so we're just going to reset. Now, theoretically, as long as it did remove that disk, it should now attempt to boot from the hard drive. And you can see we've got the HD busy flashing down there if you saw that. There you go. And that's now booting from the hard drive. Now, even though it didn't work when we tried to sys it, obviously didn't have a path to the, uh, the sys command because we copied over um, everything, including human.sys. We just reorganise this a little bit. Oops. That one, I think. There you go. You got the human.sys file there, um, and that's effectively the uh, the hidden system file. So 
that's it that's a basic operating system uh, installed but then what you probably want to do is install uh, the remaining discs so the way to do that there may be another way but <clears throat> this is one way to go so we'll select disk 2 now the hard drive because we've booted from the hard drive has come up as disk A when we insert a floppy disk that will still come up as disk B so let's just have a look we'll see what we've got there yep a whole load of uh, files with uh, Japanese file names that don't make a lot of sense unless you're uh, fluent in Japanese but don't worry about that too much okay what we're going to do is literally drag B to A and it's the left of the two options to confirm that's fine and then we're basically going to repeat that for the remaining disks so if you're wondering incidentally how we get to the menu in the emulator if you assuming you've got a scrolly mouse it's the um, the middle mouse button so the scroll wheel just press that and that will break out and give you the uh, the option to go into the menu so then we've done this two we're going to do this three and just have a quick look yeah make sure that has spot disk and then again drag b to a and confirm Okay, and then again, swap disk, disk four. Let's check it. Yeah, it's fine. And B to A. Um, now, obviously, this is kind of optional. You don't necessarily need to uh, to copy over all of these remaining disks, but there are some tools and utilities on there that may prove useful. It's entirely up to you. Okay, this five. Again we'll just check it. Yeah. And we'll copy that over as well. And we're done. So then if we just Check that floppy and reset. Okay, there you go, we're done. So let's go in the emulator. So if you want to tidy up the uh, directory listing it's that option <laughs> okay I'll tidy things up a bit um, and then as I showed on a previous video but I'll show you just once if you find um, a file or an icon that's got that symbol that should be the control panel so start that up and you can leave that open most of it should be fairly self-explanatory but okay, there's your mouse settings if you want to play around with that desktop colors and whatever else okay so we've got an image we now want to quit out of the emulator because we're done here let's just exit and it's this file that we've created so we can now rename that to boot2.bhd okay. or you can copy it whatever whatever works for you and then however you want to connect to your mister start mine up okay so in this case I'm just going to use WinSCP okay connect to 
just uh, once it's on the network. There you go. Okay. So you can see here, I'm, I've already done this recently, but I'm in. I've got my destination set to slash media slash fat slash game slash x68000, and you can see I've already got boot 2.vhd so I'm not going to overwrite it. But in your case, you're going to basically pick up that boot 2.vhd and drag it to the destination and copy it to the mister, and that's it. You're done. Simple as that. So hopefully that was useful. Um, <laughs> Don't know as much else I can show you. Obviously, there's this is just one approach that you could take, but the um, the logical steps are going to be pretty much the same whichever way you skin it. So, good luck, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers for now, guys.